XSpace. XSpace gives us several new device types as an extension to Space 3. The simulation special function intlib contains a number of XSpace components. These components typically use a subcircuit wrapper that contains an XSpace device coupled with one or more control devices, the B device, for example. Then we'll have a quick look at Simcoe Digital Extension to XSpice. To get started, let's create a new PCB project, File, New, Project, and then choose the project name. We'll make that VCO, and uh, set your location and desktop. Make sure you have the Create Project folder checked so that it creates the folder. Click OK, and now we're going to add a schematic. Right-click on the project name, add new to project schematic. And let's save this schematic as VCO. Now we're going to go to our Libraries panel and then choose simulation special function and we're going to select three different sources from here VCO sign, VCO square, SQR, and VCO triangle, TRI like so. We're also going to go to simulation sources and grab a V pulse. Now we're going to make some connections with the place wire command source designator to VIN and the remaining designators I'm going to do very quickly with the command tools annotate schematic quietly. Now double click on VIN, click on editing of the model and choose the parameters to change the values. The VCO source allows you to drive the frequency sources with the magnitude of the input reference. We're going to set, the, uh, we're going to set our impulse reference Initial value of 1, pulse value of 5, time delay of 0, rise time of 5 milliseconds, fall time 1 microsecond, pulse width of 5 milliseconds, and a period of 15 milliseconds. Note that if you set the initial value to 0 volts, you'll get a warning generated that the extrapolated minimum frequency is 1e to the minus 16 power. Click OK with those options. Back over here. Now we do need to uh, set a few labels here for our outputs. We can do that with place net label. Now we're going to go to our simulation setup. Under general setup, include all these three outputs as well as the VIN input. Make all those active signals. We don't want an operating point. Uh, for the transient analysis, make sure you have used transient default enabled. Set the default cycles display to 2 and the default points per cycle of 1000. And now we're going to run our simulation. Uh, there's some good looking waveforms. The output frequency is generated in response to the value of the input voltage and is controlled by the XSpice reference device. In the model, the C parameter defines the voltage levels. The F devices define the corresponding output frequencies. The output frequency is linearly interpolated between the points. So let's go back to the schematic. So let's return to the schematic and edit the VCO square wave. We'll go to parameters. And we'll add the values as shown here. Basically, these parameters indicate that when VIN is less than 4, the frequency is 1K. Otherwise, the frequency is 4K. So, with those changes, we're going to re-simulate. Now we see the change to the square wave. Next steps, we're going to build the phase lock loop and take a look at how digital SIM code is used to drive the sub-circuit model. Okay, we're going to close this project and create a new one. And we're going to give it a name of PLL. And we're going to add a new schematic to that. Now let's build our circuit. We're going to first go to the miscellaneous devices library to grab uh, 
let's say it's block loop. Pop it down here. Get the resistor. 1K resistor, attach that to pin 7. We have another 1K resistor. And now we're going to go to our simulation sources and grab a and grab a VSFFM. Pop that over here and a DC V source. We're going to add some grounds. And also grab a VCC connection. Create some wires to hook some of this up. Then we're going to assign some designators. Our signal reference, we're going to call V in. And while we're here, we're going to edit the parameters for it. Parameters tab. We want an offset of 2.5 volts. Amplitude of 2.5 volts. Carrier frequency, 100K. Modulation index of 5. And a signal frequency of 10. We'll change these DC supply to VCC. Give it a value of 5 volts. Change our capacitor value here that we missed earlier to 0.002 microfarads. Use our tools. Annotate schematic quietly to take care of the remaining designators. And then we're going to just place a few net labels and out. We're also going to modify the PLL, model its parameters. Because there are two models, it includes a footprint. Make sure that you select simulation first, then click on edit. Go to the parameters tab. We want an FC value of 100K, FR of 50K, and RS of 100. We go to our simulation configuration. And we want to turn off the operating point analysis. Go and make sure the transient is set up and we want to stop time um, now notice it's grayed out so if you disable the use transient defaults and those are now available the stop time we want to set to 200 microseconds step size to 100 nanoseconds max step size to 100 nanoseconds as well in the general setup make sure you have both in and out as our active signals and we are ready to run the simulation. So now we see the output pulse following the frequency of the input pulse, which is exactly what we would expect from the PLL. So now we're going to go back to the schematic. So let's have a look at the PLL and the models underneath here. I'm going to select the PLLX click on edit and then go to the model file. If I scroll down, find the sub circuit and specifically the ADC and DAC node bridges. Now checking the third icon in the toolbar, the simulation toolbar will generate the XPice netlist. The sim code models are referenced using a keyword model path. Keyword gets converted in the generated NXF file. You go to the pll.nsx tab. Scrolling through the netlist, we find dot model APL LINBUF. And right after that is the SIM code information. Reference SIM code models with an SCB extension are encrypted. Unencrypted SIM code files have a text extension. We'll save building and customizing SIM codes files for some other class. 
For more complex signal manipulations such as device operation of PLLs or digital logic gates, SIM code allows signals to be converted to voltage high and voltage low and fed into a system similar to a state machine. Then digital SIM code can use the equivalent ones and zeros using propagation delays. SIM code is used for all digital component models in Ultimate Designer as there are no standard digital models in the SPICE language.